All right, hello all you people out there. This is Michael of Toon Half Stooges, and welcome back to another one of these Game Maker things. Anyway, uh, the first thing that I say here should probably not actually be related to programming, but if you hear a lot of loud banging noises, no, I'm not getting bombed. It happens to be the 4th of July, and some idiots are deciding it's a good idea to shoot fireworks off in the backyard. So there's that. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but... We can do some things. There's this introductory level sort of thing of a bunch of couple things that... Um, it's possible to do so far in this game. Uh, you can save the game, and then you can um, uh, you can you can go and die, and and then you can load the game. Uh, you can do a couple different things. There's different levels. You can you can do a bunch of things. And one thing that I feel like people are going to want to see that hasn't been done uh, so far is power ups because those are always fun because you can do things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do, and you can rather um, extend the mechanics of your game create a couple puzzles that the player has to solve or something like that. Anyway, I have gone ahead of time and added a couple sprites, so now we have a blue, a blue tall and blue strong. This is an extra tall version of the sprite, and this is a just slightly bigger version of the sprite. And I've also added diamond purple and diamond orange. They're not actually diamonds, they're, uh, they're more like rectangles, but details. And those are going to represent a couple things. So, for power-ups, we're going to do a couple of things. First thing, we're going to create an object for something to happen when the player crashes into it. Not like an enemy, a wall, a bullet, or whatever it happens. So we're going to just say, power up. You can put object in front of it if you want to, but uh, I don't like that kind of convention. I prefer the Java method. Uh, heh, method. So not in create. Um, right now, I think uh, this is going to get a sprite, and we're going to make that sprite diamond purple, just so that you can see it. It's just... It's a little bigger than the bullet doll, but it's not as big as the player. And when the player runs into it, something is going to happen. And for now, just to make sure that it works, we're going to say collision with uh, power up. And you're going to say show message hi. And uh, we're going to say, I don't know, x plus equals, uh, no, plus equals like 64 or something so that you end up a little further away. And uh, you don't repeatedly crash into the object and make the game freeze up, because that's no fun. So in the level editor, we're going to move, uh, let's move this over here somewhere. And we have the power up, and we're going to just, just drop one of those over there. Alright, so we can go and, uh, I almost ran into the enemy, that would have been bad if I, like, died at my own game. Uh, we're going to jump, it says hi, and we are suddenly magically, uh, teleported. So, we know that that works. Now, to make anything happen, well, I have the loudest chair of all time, but to make anything happen, I say this a lot about a lot of things in programming because it is true about a lot of things in programming, but especially this, there's a lot of ways to make something work, and a lot of them have their good points and their bad points that work better than some other things, but in some ways they might also work not as great as some other things. And here especially, Everyone that I've seen implement power-up related things does it slightly differently. I have my way, and other people have their own way, and there's nothing really wrong with it. So I'm just going to go into this video looking more that I'm not teaching anybody how to do anything, but I'm just showing them one way that they could be doing things and hopefully get some ideas flowing. Anyway, there is one relatively important thing that I'd like to cover in this video though, so don't just close out of this yet and just go and work on your own little thing, because there is something that I don't believe I've talked about yet, at least not in great detail, that you probably will find useful in programming at one point or another. So for now, we're just going to say instead of show, show message hi, we're going to say with other that. And this is also, I guess I should say there's a couple of uh, things that you'll probably find useful if you don't already know them in this video that I'm going to be talking about here. The first one is event perform. So if you want to, you can force another one of these events to happen. So if something happens and you for some reason want to, to make the create event happen again and reset all the variables, I don't know, maybe you're... I wouldn't say you die because then you probably restart the game, but maybe you want to refresh the player and get rid of all attributes that have been changed, like HP and, um, for that matter, power-ups and stuff like that. You could run into an object and um, run the create event again to refresh the player. And for that, the syntax would be, uh, where it says ev other, we'd say ev, we'd say ev create and then zero, because if you were to uh, go inside this function and you see the help at the bottom, you have the type of event that you want to occur and you have the number. And the type is basically when you go add event and click on one of these things and the specific number 
is on the drop down when you select something and you have a bunch of outside room, game start, whatever, uh, key press up, down, left, right, whatever. The create and the draw event don't happen to have anything specific like that, but that's just information. In this case, event other and user defines zero. Now, you may have noticed, you may have not, that if you're to go into the other tab, at the bottom there's this list of user defines zero through 15, and these are basically just little dumps of code that you can make. They don't happen at any specific time, they won't happen automatically ever, but you can put code in them, and you can um, tell the game to force them to happen at some point or another. They're basically miniature scripts if you only want uh, one type of object, one specific type of object to be able to execute it. It's sort of like visibility modifiers work in other programming languages, but uh, in any case, because we want to keep most of the, uh, the game code contained in the player object, we're going to be having the collision detected by the player, and because all the code that's going to, be, that's going to be happen is going to be determined by the type of power-up you run into, uh, you're going to want to then pass the baton, as it were, over to the, uh, the power-up option that you collided with, and that's what the other keyword does. I think I talked about that before in the series, but in any case, so we're going to do something simple here, and we're going to change the sprite to, uh, to the tall one. So we're going to say player dot sprite index equals really not that complicated. All right, and we're going to run the game, and uh, we're going to get rid of you. I should really just move that enemy so that I don't keep running into it. And we're going to run into this, and we are now tall. All right, so that's one thing. Now, more than likely you're going to want these changes to the player when you run into the power-up to be more than cosmetic. You're going to want something to happen, um, such as you get a bonus of some sort. Maybe you're going to get more HP or more running speed or more attack or whatever. So, remember that you can change other attributes to the player. So, uh, when I did my, uh, my lesson plan, as it were, for this video, I made the tall, uh, tall power-up make you run faster. So I'm just, gonna, uh, I'm just going to edit the player movement code slightly and uh, not that event, in the, let's see, what is it, in the step event, instead of saying uh, HSP equals 4 minus 4, I'm going to say it equals move speed. And this is going to be uh, plus move speed. And just because you might as well apply this to jumping as well, we're, we're, what happens when you jump? We're going to say this is 16 is 4 times 4, so we're going to say this is 4 times move speed, and we're going to be defining this in the object create, so we're going to say move speed equals uh, 4, and when you run to this we might as well go and say, uh, how about ma let's make it 6 or something, that's uh, big enough to make it noticeable but not like ridiculous or anything, so there we go. Now I also said before forgetting into the purple world that I'm going to be moving this little, uh... okay now it sounds like I am being bombed, but I'm going to move that over there. Actually, I might, let's just move you completely out of the room, because we don't want to deal with you. So we're going to be running over here, we're going to be hitting the purple, and we're tall. We can move slightly faster, we can jump slightly higher. Alright, now that's great if you only want to have one type of power-up. If you wanted to, to make more, you could just replicate this as many times as you want, but that's going to get really tiresome after a while. So. Okay, that's either like an explosion or a thunderbolt. Oh, 4th of July is the best time ever for me to put off recording to, whatever. If I, just, if I, I was going to do this in the morning, if I'd just done this in the morning it would be a lot less of a problem or whatever. So we're going to be saying, uh, this is going to be the other thing that I wanted to really talk about here, and that's going to be object inheritance. So we're going to say another object, and we're going to call this power up um, tall for lack of better things to call it. And here we're going to be uh, actually getting rid of that and moving it over here. So user zero, that's that's not what I meant to paste. Um, I don't remember what's on that link that I was copying, but it's probably something stupid. We have power up tall, we're going to give it a sprite because why not? And we're going to change the, uh, the object here in the room to tall. Let's put it closer to where you spawn just to make it slightly easier for us. Ah, that looks good. And we're going to run the game. Actually, wait. Nothing is going to happen, and if you want to know why, because uh, player is looking for collisions with uh, power-up and not tall. 
This sounds really weird if you're not thinking about programming. But as I was saying a minute ago, if you had, say, 20 different types of power-up, you'd have to make another collision and have the same line of code for every one of them, and we want to avoid that. So, if you don't know this already, most programming languages, including GameMaker, give you this great thing called object inheritance. And let's we're going to have this inherit from power-up, parent as it's known. This chair is just hilarious how much noise it makes. But what this is going to do is it's uh, it's going to be identified by the game as actually both its parent object and it itself. So that means uh, if this were to, I'm going to um, make these smaller so that you can see both of them. So if, say, I'm going to do something simple and put, um, let's see, in the create event for our power up, we're going to just say show message and tie because I'm creative. And uh, even though this thing happens to be one of the tall variety, when you run the game and in the creation code, you're going to get the message. And that is because tall inherits information from just the parent power-up object, so that all uh, all events here are executed. Technically, unless you were to, say, write your own creation, a uh, uh, little bit of creation code, and this would get overridden. If I do that, then this is going to no longer happen. Uh, no pop at that time. They're treated the same way with... Um, I'm going to get rid of that. They're treated the same way with collisions. So, let's see. What's... Uh, I'm going to get rid of that, too. What's, what did I put in this thing again here? Oh, so we're going to make that tall. So now, given that uh, power up tall now inherits some power up, if you were to run into this, run the game and run into this, and you hit it, you'd suddenly turn tall. Even though in the player object, it quite clearly says just when you collide with this. And I'm going to assume most people can see where this is going now, but like I said before, say you want to have multiple different types of power up. So I'm going to be creating another one of these. We're going to say power up big, and uh, we're going to make this diamond orange, and we're going to give this some code in the user zero dump. I'm going to I'm going to just keep calling it that, aren't I? But now instead of saying the sprite player dot sprite index equals uh, instead of it being tall, we're going to say it's a uh, blue strong or big or whatever I called it. And that's what we're going to say. Uh, we're going to specify the movement speed is zero. Or I mean, not zero, four. If it was zero, it wouldn't be going anywhere. But player dot move speed equals four. Otherwise, um, you just keep flying around at the speed of light. And because why not? We'll make you. Uh, we'll give you more HP. Make it twenty instead of ten. We'll make it twenty instead of ten. All right. So we're going to go and. Actually, uh, similarly to dealing with movement speed and big, we're going to be dealing with HP here. And this is just going to, uh, if you happen to have more HP than 10 here, you're going to go back down to, uh, to 10. Just to keep the game a little bit more balanced, we're going to run this. Uh, do we have one of these? No, we don't have one of these yet. Uh, we're going to go and put that over there, so we have both of them in the room. And we're going to run into you, we get tall, and we can run around fast. And... I forgot to make that inherit, didn't I? Every one of these videos, it seems like I forget to do something important. Yeah, we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be doing that, and running the game. For the for the amount of time I put into like um, planning these videos, you'd think I'd screw them up less. But anyhow, uh, we're big and slow, we're tall and fast, uh, we have more HP, and it all works with the minimal amount of code. At least as far as I've been able to find uh, the minimal amount of code with object inheritance and things like that. So you can apply this to like walls to make you interact with different types of walls, um, enemies, so that you deal with enemies in different ways. But that's just this. I'm going to end it here. I hope you all enjoyed that. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Watch some of the stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you later. Happy 5th of July, by the way.